Hey there everybody, how you doing? I am Francis and welcome to something brand new on this channel. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I love Sonic. So I decided for today, I will make my own top 10 list of my top 10 Sonic games. Now before we get started, just like any other top 10 list, this is based on my personal opinion. So please don't be offended if your favorites don't make it on this list. Also, I am excluding any Sonic game that I have never played because I can't have an opinion on something I never played. Now, if you guys are ready, let's get started. Number 10, Sonic Adventure DS. Okay, I know that this game has aged about as bad as a banana left out in the sun. But hear me out here. This game was great for its time. It was revolutionary, it brought Sonic to the 3D universe, and it changed the series forever. This was the first ever Sonic game that had a story. Sure, the voice acting wasn't that great, but it had a fun story, and it also had the most vicious version of Dr. Robotnik. This game gave you five wonderful characters that you could play as, and then there was this guy. Each character followed their own path of the story, and each had their own unique gameplay style, making each character worth playing. This game also introduced us to the fun and lobo Chow, and who doesn't love the Chow? The reason this game ranks so low on my list is its inability to survive the aging of time. Number 9, Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. Ah, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. The game that started it all. You can't make a top 10 list of any series without the game that started it all. That's impossible. Now, I know that this game ranking this low on a series is probably a shocker. But unfortunately, I didn't play these games in order. I actually played Sonic 2 before I got to play this game. So going from that to this game, it felt like a bit of a step back. Not saying that this was a bad game, not at all, that's not the case at all. This was the game that introduced momentum physics platforming and it put Sega on the map as a viable rival against Nintendo. My only complaint with this game is that it felt pretty slow. Like after Green Hill, the speed of the game is brought down and it never picks the pace up again. But this was the game that put Sega on the map, far from a perfect game, yes, but it set the series in the right direction. Number 8. Sonic Advance 2. Sonic Advance 2 was without any question my favorite of the Sonic Advance trilogy. This game was pretty much what a Sonic game should be. Blasting through the levels at supersonic speed, and it also had the best special stages of the Advance games. I wasn't a big fan of how you had to finish the level with all 7 special rings, in hand to get to the special stage, but that really did entice you to try different routes. When it comes to the advanced games, the Sonic games always had a screen, too zoomed in, and my biggest issue with this game were the boss fights. I hated these auto-scrolling boss fights. That's right, I'm looking at you Sky Canyon, evil hand of doom. This game was also the debut of the adorable but severely overpowered the rabbit. Number 7, Sonic Battle. Now, I may be a bit biased when it comes to talking about this game, but I always had a fondness of this game since it was actually the first game I had for the Game Boy Advance. This was a Sonic fighting game, which is an idea I always thought would be exciting even though they tried that idea with Sonic the Fighters, which wasn't all that great. But this game, was so much better than Fighters was. This game made its own battle system using 2D sprites fighting in a 3D world instead of trying to be a Mortal Kombat ripoff like Sonic the Fighters was. This game also has so many characters that each had their own strength and weakness and took some time to master. But the biggest part of this game was a battle weapon named Emerald. Emerald had a special ability to copy the abilities of his opponents. So if you learn the proper skills, all of the emerald sections will be the easiest thing you have ever done. The only flaw of this game is that you have no control over what abilities emerald will learn. He picks a skill of the opponent he is fighting at random. 
Number 6. Sonic Colors. As you guys know, the early 2000s weren't that great for everybody's favorite blue hedgehog. But then this game came out. This game was the debut of the Wisp, which I'm guessing is now going to be a common thing in the Sonic games. Which I'm not really complaining about. I do like the idea of the Wisp. I think the Wisp are great. I like the idea that there's like these beings that give Sonic uh, different abilities. But the thing is, I think they're only great if they're used properly, which they were used properly in this game. If you're looking for an example of where the Wisp are not properly used, uh, look at forces. If you are one of the people that love the Unleashed Daytime stages, but hate the whole werewolf sections, this is the game for you. Number 5. Sonic Rush. Being completely honest with you guys, I bought a DS specifically so I could play this game. Sonic Rush was a great game. I absolutely loved it. This game introduced us to Sonic's boost ability and debuted my favorite female character in the series, Blaze the Cat. Now this game can be a little awkward at first getting used to watching both the top and bottom screens since the levels use both screens, which can be a bit disorienting. But the double screen did solve the zoomed in problem the advanced games had. This way, you could see a bonus pit coming. Number 4 Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This was the one Sonic game that I spent the most amount of time playing. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle probably told the best story of the entire Sonic series. In this game, you get to choose between two different stories the hero or the dark story. This was the first Sonic game where you get to play as Sonic's arch nemesis, Dr. Eggman. And excluding the racing and Olympic games, this was the only game you get to play as Dr. Eggman. This game also debuted Rouge the Bat and the Edge Lord himself, Shao the Hedgehog. As I mentioned at number 10, Sonic Adventure DX was far from a perfect game. This game took a lot of the problems from Sonic Adventure and made this game so much better. They removed the hub levels, making the story more linear and easier to proceed because with the hub levels, there, it wasn't really like a good at giving you directions so it was easy to get lost in that. And they also improved the child world. Number 3. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the sequel that kicked the ass of the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. I talked about this a little bit earlier in this list. But I played this game before I played Sonic the Hedgehog 1, and to be honest, I found this game a lot more fun than the first one was. The levels kept at fast pace and I rarely ever felt slowed down. This game introduces to the spin dash, which has become a standard move in the Sonic series following this game. And it was also the debut of Sonic's loyal sidekick, Miles Tails Power. And it also introduced us to the 7th Chaos Emerald and the power of Super Sonic. My only problem with Super Sonic was jumping is all it took to transform and there are some parts you don't want to transform but you gotta jump to proceed through the level. You guys know what my least favorite part of this game was, right? That's right, the special stages. I know I'm not alone when I say, screw the goddamn half pipe! Number 2, Sonic Mania. What can I say about this game? This was a nice nostalgia trip, and who doesn't love a little nostalgia? With what Sonic has become lately, we need a game like this to remind us why we all love Sonic in the first place. This game was pretty much a giant love letter to Sonic. It included everything from the old Sonic games that we loved and combined it all together into a nice little package. To be honest with you guys, I was this close to putting this as number one on this list. But there is one game that will always hold a number one spot on my list. And you guys already know what that is. I'll give you three seconds to guess what it is. Three, two, one. That's right, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I love everything about this game. This game was the debut of Knuckles the Echidna, Sonic's new rival turned friend with a common enemy. Each character had their own in-air ability. Knuckles could glide, climb walls, and break breakable walls with his face. 
Tails can fly and swim, and Sonic has the Insta Shield and Shield effects depending on the shield he had. This was also the debut of the Elemental Shields, and each of them had a unique ability. The Thunder Shield dragged rings to you, the Flame Shield protects you from fire, and the Bubble gave you infinite air in the Underwater levels, making the Underwater levels a little bit better and less nightmare inducing. This was also the first Sonic game with level transitions, so it makes sense how you get from one level to the other. Also, are you short on time and need to call a day? No problem, because Sonic 3 was the first Sonic game to have a save feature. Which was great for me as a kid because I only got 1-2 to two hours of gaming time when I was a kid. This game also had the best special stages in the entire series. Blue Spears! Also, don't forget the Super Emeralds and the dearly missed Hyper Sonic. I could go on forever singing the praises of this game, but I think you guys get the point. And that is my list guys. Thank you so much for joining me in my top 10 Sonic games list. If you guys agree or disagree with anything I said, let me know in the comments down below. Also, what is your number one Sonic game? Let me know in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you guys and the comment section is a judgment free zone for you guys. Also, let me know if there are any other lists you would like to see me make. Thank you once again for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. But until then, have a nice day. Bye everybody.